Have you been wondering whether or not you should update to the latest NVIDIA driver 546.29? Well, if so, you clicked on the right video, because in today's video, I'll be comparing yesterday's driver against the previous driver. So sit down, strap in, let's go. Right guys, in today's video, as the intro suggests, I'll be comparing the previous driver, which I was a big fan of, 546.17 versus the most recent driver, 546.29. So for those of you that watched my split screen comparison I did yesterday, I do use GeForce Experience to record gameplay, so it does skew results a little bit. Uh, it's not 100% accurate, but it did look like 546.29, whereas it didn't have any fixes, it did look like it actually had better performance than the previous driver. But, is that how it is once we do synthetic benchmarks? Let's find out. Before we get to the results, guys, please, um, if you subscribe to the channel, please make certain that you uh, set all, all notifications on, so that when I do drop a new video, you are notified instantaneously like the video share the video comment on the video really will help, help me with the algorithm if you're not subscribed to the channel if you find this type of content helpful please consider subscribing by the end of the video and then if you go down on my home page i've i just recently did a full gp optimization and a full cp optimization earlier last week um, the full cp optimization for 10th generation and newer cpus if you have undervolting locked this will show you how to unlock undervolting and then this video over here will show you how to go about setting the right undervolt adjusting the turbo ratio limits and getting your temperatures down from the 90s into the 70s when you unload but you're not here for that you're here for the driver comparison so as mentioned i'm comparing 546.17 versus 546.29 all my games are tested in medium settings, with the exception of the newer titles. Because I do test on a GTX 1650 laptop, uh, the GTX 1650, uh, the newer games you have to play on that. Just, it's just how it is. Um, single, I do play and binge mainly single player. I don't have any space for multiplayer, and also the data I collect is slightly less reliable than data I get from single player. Um, where FSR 2.0 or 2.1 is available, I use a quality setting. And then lastly, I do test on a GTX 1650 laptop. So if you got an RTX card, you might find that your results are different. But generally, it's only if you're on an RTX 3060 and up that results may differ. Um, if you're on a, a RTX 3050 and lower, your results will probably be very comparable to mine. But at that, let's get to those results. So guys, um, if you watch any of my driver videos lately, especially for single player, 546.17 is a driver that I used to highly recommend because it has good raw performance. When I add up all the average FPS, and I only benchmarked 10, 12 games last night, because the power went out here. So when I add up all the average FPS, I get to 788 over 12 games. When I add up all the 1% lows, I get to 594. And then when I add up all the 0.1% lows, I get to 504. So if you watch any of my driver videos, in terms of raw performance, 546.17 was the driver I highly recommended. But then 546.29 came out. And um, people are moaning about the fact that they know uh, bug fixes or whatever, but it doesn't matter. This driver just has good performance. So when I add up all the average FPS, I get to 793. So not a major jump, but a 5 FPS increase there. This is the the um, the, the metric where the improvement is. When I add up all the 1% lows, I get to 602. So that's a, what, that's an 8 FPS jump just in 12 games in terms of stability, 1% lows. So 546.29 is quite a bit more stable than 546.17, which was quite stable in the first place. And then when I add up all the one, uh, the 0.1% lows, I get to 507. Uh, so you can see it's three FPS higher than uh, the previous driver, which is kind of negligible. So in terms of the 0.1% the, the lows, it's pretty much the same, but slightly better. The 1% lows is quite a significant jump, 602. And I generally test over 15 or 16 games. So you probably see that that 1% low uh, got even bigger if I did test over uh, more games. 
And then in terms of the average FPS, it's also slightly better. So guys, if you want my opinion, 546.29 seems like it's got good latency. So for people that play multiplayer games, uh, specifically because this game was um, tuned with Modern Warfare 2 in mind, I, I think that um, the latency should be pretty damn decent on this driver. Um, the, for single player games, you definitely want to be using 546.29 because I've been singing the praises of 546.17 but 546.29 creams 546.17 so whereas people often complain about NVIDIA drivers I can tell you one thing this is probably the best uh, NVIDIA driver update that I've tested in quite some time if not ever um, if you just look at the metrics so obviously I don't have it in front of me now but it was using less CPU, so the CPU percentage is down anywhere between two to five percent, um, and that is due to the fact that uh, the wattage uh, on the CPU used is anywhere between two to five watts lower on just about any game or every game that I tested. Obviously, I don't test every game, but I test uh, and a great deal of games. So the, the CPU wattage was lower, the CPU usage was lower, and the CPU temperature was anywhere two to four degrees lower in most games. So guys, I actually think 546.29 is a pretty damn good update. But anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button. If you have any questions, please hit me up in the comment section. And as always guys, if you're still watching and you haven't subscribed as of yet, now's the time to do so. Friday. No, it's not. It's Monday. Have a good week. It's people like you. Cheers.